Next on BYUSN, officially BYU is in the Big 12. Is that enough just to be in for a successful year one as the Cougars take on the Power Five? Plus, it's a Maddich Monday with my teammate and brother Trevor Maddich. We'll talk with him about how he feels now that BYU is in the Big 12, where he expects BYU to finish in the conference standings in year one, and what he thinks is the best win in BYU football history. All this and more. Now that's how you do a Monday, Blaine. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. I am Spencer Linton. As I just mentioned, Blaine Fowler joining me. And you are now officially a Big 12 sports analyst. I'm trying to think I've done a Big 12 game before, but now you're right. It's official because I'm going to do some Big 12 stuff now. I may have done a Big 12 game. <laughs> I've done at, some, at some point. I was thinking back. I've done yeah. a couple games at Texas Tech, but it wasn't officially a Big 12 yeah. announcer. I was like a guest doing a Big 12 game. Yeah. So now it's on, this, man. This is big time Now stuff. you are the guy. I mean, what an incredible weekend for yeah. sure. Oh, unbelievably fun. And uh, the energy was palpable everywhere you went this weekend as BYU officially in the Big 12. So on today's show, what does BYU athletics need to do in year one in the Big 12 to call it a success? Or is just being in the conference enough? Um, or, or our BYU football best wins bracket championship. Yeah. You, you guys have been working on that. Um, for quite a while here. You've got a dog in the fight. I got Wayne. a dog in the fight. We've <laughs> talked about this. There's, yeah. there is a, I mean, there's reasons for each, but we're going to reveal who won that championship. Is it 1990 Miami game, or is it the 1984 Michigan um, that's crowned the best win? And the fans weighed in on that. Um, ESPN's Trevor Maddich, as we mentioned, will join the program. Um, what are his emotions with BYU now officially in the Big 12? Plus, sound from the big party this weekend uh, from Tom Homo, Jen Rockwood. Jill G. Ta Dil G. Taylor um, video. We, we've got it all for you. We're going to relive this weekend a little bit in the show today. Listen, typically this is where I tell people to rise and shout, but there's something we need to take care of now that BYU oh, is officially right. a team in the Big 12 Conference. Hit it! Countdown to the Bearcats. 61 days. Okay, 61 days away from BYU's first football game as a member of the Big 12 Conference. We've been counting down to the Big 12. Well, it's done now. Yeah. So now we can just push it forward to Sam Houston in the first football game on September 2nd. It's, it's, it's almost weird to think that because we've been counting it down. The, the announcement was long enough ago, um, and we've been counting down to Big 12 Day. It's, it seems hard to just turn the page. <laughs> And we're not counting that down anymore. But but I am I am glad to be counting down to a game against Sam Houston in 61 days. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was almost two full years. I mean, that invitation came on September 10th, 2021, and it was made official on July 1st of 2023. So the long wait is over. It's pretty cool. And the long wait for an actual football game is, relatively speaking, almost over. So now we rise and shout and get to what's trending. We are going to see a BYU we have never seen. There's never been a better time in the involvement of the 12 than right now. Prepare for what is going to be the best version of BYU ever. What's Trending presented by Feast Box, donating 10% of every order to Full of Hope, a charitable organization that feeds hungry families. We just mentioned to Blaine, what a weekend for BYU. Like, it, it was interesting to talk to Commissioner Yormark and talk with Tom Homo about this whole transition state for BYU because he, Brett Yormark didn't realize that BYU was going to go all in and celebrate the way that we did with fan fests and a midnight countdown and renting space in Times Square on the, you know, on the video boards there as BYU becomes a Big 12 team. But as you watch all of this unfold... Not just your reaction, but what, what did this weekend mean to you as a former athlete and longtime BYU sports analyst? It, it was huge because we've been waiting for this for a long time. I mean, we're, we're talking about since 1984 when we won that national ch championship. I feel like immediately following that, there was a rally by the, the then, I don't, we, the, we didn't call them power fives back then, by that group to say, what do we do to keep this from ever happening yeah. again? A, a team like BYU, outside the power structure, they cannot ever win a national championship in football again. And we had the BCS and all those things. So for me, it was, hey, guess what? 
BYU's back yeah. in. Now BYU is a power five. They're on the outside looking. It's very satisfying that it's come full circle. And, and they have a shot. I'm not saying they're going to win one anytime soon in college football uh, because it seems like Alabama and Ohio State and a few others have a grip on that. Although TCU from the Big 12 did play in that in the championship game last year. But, but to me, that's what it means. And I'll tell you what, my thoughts on this last weekend, uh, your mark has to be impressed because BYU's fans, they showed up big time and they're so excited as we talk to coaches we talk to players there was this real sense of excitement and energy um we had amber whiting on the show on on saturday and we got off, when we went to a break i wanted to go play she got me so fired up to be to be in the new league she's like let's go let's go she just kept saying let's go and i was like yeah let's go let's get in this league and compete i also note from that as as, as we're there byu's fan base is second to none I mean, who has a better uh, international, not just national, international fan base? The way they showed up in huge numbers with such great enthusiasm was impressive. Um, this, I noted on my way out. Yeah. Um, where are you from? So people came and put pins. Now, remember, this isn't where are you watching the show from, because we have people watch the show from Japan and Korea and all over the place. These are people in attendance on Saturday in they Provo. They came to Provo for the big fan festival and put a pin. I, we were counting it up. Colton, our producer, said he thinks that 47 states are represented there. They came from all over. Where are you from? Well, BYU's fan base is from everywhere. This was impressive. I knew this. But graphically, when I looked at that, I was so impressed with that. And, and then after, after interviewing Tom Homo, along with several players and coaches, it's apparent that some programs are more ready than others to compete in the Big 12. We sure, knew that. Sure. But, but here we are in it, and we start talking, and you start to go, oh, maybe this program's not quite ready. Maybe this one is. But the whole weekend, to me, was mostly about, about the fans, this great fan base. They deserve this. Yeah, it, it was a celebration in every way, shape, and form. I wasn't sure what was going to happen on Friday night. Uh, I was asked by BYU Athletics to co-host the celebration, the countdown to midnight, along with uh, Alema Harrington, one of your former right. teammates and a longtime broadcaster, and Jerem, of course. And, you know, going into it, I thought, hey, it'd be cool if there were, you know, a few hundred fans to show up. And who's going to stay up on Friday night on June 30th into July 1st on a holiday weekend. How many people are even going to be here to do this? And Blaine, they just, the fans just kept coming through the gate. Like, I was like, we got to start the show and the line's still way out into the parking lot. Holy cow. So, I mean, it was only a half an hour show, but what an incredible job by athletics. They had people with cowboy hats with royal blue lights uh, on the outline of the hat. They were giving away, you know, um, what, what do they call those? Those batons that light up blue, you know, that they give away in the rock as well. And glasses and blue goggles that light up. It like So to see, like, I don't, I don't know how many people were there. Over a thousand. Yeah. Like, at see midnight, a, right? At midnight. See a thousand people just go absolutely nuts when the countdown clock gets here, and then there are fireworks exploding off in the distance, set off at human <laughs> fields. It, I told my friends after that were they were there. It was like an emotional overload in the most wonderful fashion, Blaine. There were so many things happening all at once, and I was like, "This is what it. This is what it feels like." It's, yes, it, it, this is what it feels like to be in the Big Twelve. Pretty amazing, and. The lie, the why was lit right at the at midnight. Of midnight, right? Which yeah. is which is really cool to look up and see that, and, and we're seeing some video, video footage. Chaos, Blaine. It, hey, the Wonderful fans that showed chaos. up, which was a lot. They were rewarded in a big way. BYU uh, promotions and marketing and all that. What an amazing weekend that they put on for the fans, and the fans deserved it. We just saw a video clip of what you mentioned <laughs> that, uh, walk, the, in, in Times Square. Yes. You rent you rent video that's, board hey, space in that's, Times that's, Square. That's my home state, you know. Welcome and, to the Big Twelve. And when you're in the big time, you're in Times Square. And BYU, you know, welcome to the Big Twelve in Times Square. What is that? Street. Broadway and Forty Second, yeah, downtown right, New right York down City, in Times Square. Goodness. Um, but yeah, between Forty Fourth and Forty Seventh, right there. You know, you're in the big time. Yeah, I was. If, hey, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Somebody should put that in a song. You know what? I think you're onto something there, Blake. Okay, okay. There you we go. should probably contact a few <laughs> billboard artists to see if we can make that happen. Okay, but, oh, incredible. It, what a great weekend. So now, now, question, question for for you and for everyone out there: With BYU officially in the Big 12 now, so it's happened. We've been looking forward to it. Now it's there. Are you happy and satisfied with finally just being in a P5 conference for this first year? Is that enough right now, or is there some level of success? Um, that's needed in year one 
for you to be happy about this transition now? And what does that look like? If there's some level of success, what does that look like? And I'm talking about more in general terms, not just for football. Yeah. But what does that look like for you to be okay? This is an interesting question for a program like BYU Athletics. Because the standard has been so high for so long in every other conference that they have competed in, and BYU in large part has relished and thrived in the underdog role, Blaine, against mm. Big 12 teams and other Power 5 conference teams. They've utilized this as, hey, look, we're right there with you. In fact, <clears throat> off, more often than not, we can beat you, especially in the Olympic sports. Right. Okay? So there's this, there's this standard that has been set, but now that BYU is a Power 5 team, how do you maintain that underdog mentality and go and still compete for championships and expect to be you know, a championship caliber team. Like managing expectations is a tricky beast this first year. It, it really depends on the team for me, it, 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 you know, and it's, it's going to be that way. I can't give you an overall encompassing general answer where it's like, oh, yeah, the whole athletic department's in the Big 12. If they don't, you know, if they have losing records, whatever, we're in the Big 12. We get all the money. It's great. I can't do that. The teams have been so good, and the athletic department has been so consistently good at, at succeeding with fewer resources and getting the most out of their athletes, again, generally speaking, that the competitor in me says, Blaine, we're, yes, it's awesome. It's, it's a success to get into the Big 12. It's a culmination of all of these efforts. But if soccer doesn't go and compete for a Big 12 championship and volleyball is, you know, not a top three or four team in the Big 12 conference, there will be a level of disappointment for me. We're spoiled, okay? That's what I'm feeling right now. I'm spoiled that, I have, that I'm feeling like, oh, no, soccer, like they should be right there for a title. I think BYU football, if they finish, you know, I mean, there are 14 teams in the conference. If they finish four and five in their ninth place or whatever and they win seven games, awesome. But I, I'm not going to be okay, really, fall sports specifically speaking, with a losing record of any of those teams. I'm not going to be okay with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Hey, just win. Just win, right? And for football, I think a winning record in a bowl game is maybe the benchmark. But, but you're right. I look at some of these programs and I'm thinking, soccer you mentioned specifically. They, this is a program that competes for national championships, not league championships. And they're coming from a league. We had a chance to meet with Jen Rockwood. We're going to share some of that with you a little bit later in the show. But we're... You have Santa Clara just won a national championship. Portland's been a nationally ranked team. So, so the WCC is a very good soccer league, but maybe the Big 12 is a little bit deeper. Um, top to bottom. Yeah, uh, top to bottom. Yes. There may be a couple more good teams. But when BYU's coming from that league and they've played in a national championship game, they've been a top five team in the country, I'm going, why not go win a conference championship here? And I think that that's what the players and staff are thinking, right? I, I think volleyball, women's volleyball is thinking, yeah, let's go. Like, we can compete in this league. Perennially a yeah, top 20 wi team. Women's softball, I think Gordon Eakins and his crew are thinking, let's go win a championship, you know? And and certainly, um, you know, in the fall, it would be cross country, and then in the spring, um, track and field, both men's and women's, they compete for national titles in the fall every year in cross country. So why not go win a championship? So, so here's what I'm going to say. If... If they don't win some, at least one championship. One conference championship. If they, there, I predict there will be a conference championship or two in the fall season. And the spring's going to be a little tougher because BYU's really good sports compete in the fall, right? But if they don't win one or two championships and they're not nationally relevant in this first year, I'll be, disapp I'll be disappointed. Just How like about that? Yeah. yeah. The, the, again, the programs, the Olympic sports, that's how we term them here at BYU Broadcasting, the, the sports outside of you know, football and basketball, they've been so good that there's just this, this a standard. They okay? should be ready to like, roll. They're already Power 5 ready. Yes. And have been there for a long, long time. Yeah. So why would we be like, oh, yeah, let's oh, just it's take, okay. a, let's New take conference. a step, no. take a step No back. way is that okay with us. Yeah. With football specifically, yeah, there's like we're a little bit more lenient and patient because it's just it's and and uh, certainly in the winter basketball we're going to be patient. Yes, they're not there yet. Those teams are not where women's soccer and women's volleyball are on the national scope. They're not right. Like consistently, just not there. They're not Sweet 16 good every year, right? Right. So got to be patient there. But you know, I'm, I'm not all in love. Hey, we're playing with house money. Uh, if losing records, no. no. Hey, it's clear. You and I have some high expectations yes. for this program. Yes, and, I, and I that's, think okay. that's okay. I think, I it's, think okay. it's okay. Our question of the day centers on that very conversation. 
What does BYU Athletics need to do in year one of the Big 12 to call it a success? This is the at entire athletic department, all sports involved, not just football and basketball. At Nate S. Dunn says on Twitter, I think success is being 5-4, and four, speaking of football, in conference play, makes the Cougars basically bowl eligible, not losing to Southern Utah and Sam Houston. That's a given. And a good start for the future. It also means they beat one of Texas, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and TCU, which is awesome. Yes, there will be multiple opportunities for quality wins. Yeah, you go five and four. Blaine, how would if you're if you're five and four in year one of the Big Twelve in a fourteen team conference in football and you go seven and five, how do you not call that a success? I, I actually think you get to a bowl, which means you win six games, you're doing pretty well. Although I, I think they're going to do better than that. I think seven is a better kind of a midpoint. Where seven, I'm I'm completely happy with seven, but I'm not surprised by eight, and I'm not flabbergasted by nine because wow. it, it depends on how they start. And and you know, getting ready for the season, I've gone back and looked at every single team and what they have coming back and their strengths and who's new on the coaching staff and all that. And there's some perennial powers there that I think are going to be down a little bit this year. Not Texas, right? But but so so don't be surprised if BYU has a better first six games than everybody's expecting. And if that yeah. happens, why not seven, eight, nine? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just saying I'm not sure. expecting that. Sure, sure. But I'm I'm not flabbergasted yeah. by that. Vegas expects five and a half right. wins for BYU. Right. So. They've been wrong before. I, I, they absolutely <laughs> have. I would love to be way over that line. All right, hashtag BYUS on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to continue to join that specific conversation. Uh, before we go to our first break, as Blaine told you a, mo a moment ago, we need to reveal the winner of our BYU football best wins bracket. What a way to kick off July with this Big 12 you know, energy around us. If you missed it, we seeded the top 16 wins in BYU history. It was chalk. This was significantly validating for me, right? Blaine. Right. I, I was on a committee that seated these, small committee. Colton, shout out to you too, brother. But this has been validating because it's been chalk all the way to one versus two, which is 1990's upset of Miami led by Ty Detmer in Provo and a game you played in and you took significant meaningful snaps in the 1984 National Championship clincher against Michigan in the Holiday Bowl. Which win was the best? The results are in. You voted. The fans voted. We gave you the seeds, the matchups. You voted. And you say with 56% of the vote, the best win in BYU football history is 1990 against the number one team in America, Miami, when Ty Detmer launched his Heisman Trophy winning campaign. I don't think there's a wrong answer in this. And the fact that it was 56% meaning that it was almost split right down the middle. It was I'm close. okay with that. And here's what I say. Miami is the best team BYU has ever beaten in its history. So, yes, this is kudos to that. Because not only did they win the previous year's national championship and the national championship the next year, this year they went on to play in the Cotton Bowl and finish, I think they finished number three. Number three. In the country. This was a great football team and a great football program. So, kudos. But which win won the most? Yeah, which meant the most. Which meant the most. 84 means the most because it meant the only national championship in school history. They're both phenomenal. I love that the vote was almost split. I'm okay with giving the nod in 1990 because that's the best football team BYU has ever, ever played. So I'm good with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. the two most notable accomplishments in BYU football history are, yes, one, the national championship, and two, Ty Detmer's Heisman Trophy. Absolutely. So. And those two wins are give, the, give the centerpieces of those accomplishments. Absolutely. Hey, BYU Sports Nation will hit the road to Dallas for Big 12 Media Days. We'll have you covered with interviews with Kalani Sataki, Keaton Slovis, Cody Epps, a number of other head coaches and players from the Big 12 teams. Make sure to watch on July 12th, 13th, and 14th at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Up next, why not kick off July in a Monday with a Maddich Monday? Trevor Maddich, another guy who played in that 1984 National Championship game, We'll weigh in on the best wins bracket. And what are his expectations like for BYU athletics overall now that the Cougars are in the Big 12? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by Feastbox Global Grill, a unique dining experience featuring Texas, Hawaiian, and Korean meats. Time to feast.
amazing, isn't it, how they uh, followed her around like that? It's uh, called imprinting. First living thing a goose sees when it's born, it automatically assumes it's its mother. They're migratory. It's a great idea. You know, birds follow me, I follow you, you go south. 14-year-old Amy Alden and 15 Canada geese. She's leading them south in this really big goose. Welcome to Big 12 Country in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Blaine Fowler. It feels right to say that. Yes. <laughs> Wait, hey, whenever you and I get to be together, <laughs> Let's go. it's always fun. Let's go. Joining us now, one of your former teammates, a longtime friend of the program, all-around great man, Trevor Maddich, ESPN College Football Analyst and Insider, is with us for a Maddich Monday, the first Monday in July, the first Monday that BYU is officially in the Big 12, Trevor. As you watched all of this unfold from your vantage point, what were your emotions like? You know, it was such a long time coming, right? It's, uh, it's exciting, it's exhilarating, and it's a relief because finally it's here, something that, that this program has worked for for a dozen years. And finally, it's here. And so the emotions are, are mixed because it's part great and it's part okay. Because then, as, as Blaine knows, as a player, now you, you exhale, you got to this point, and now the work really begins. You know, Trevor, it's, it's interesting. We're asking the fans today, is this enough that, to just be in a P5 league finally after this long wait and all the – time through independence with football is it enough just to be in the league um right now or is is you know do you have expectations of what they do here in the first year um wh what about you are you just happy for them to be in this or is there some type of expectation that you have for them uh, can they compete in year one not necessarily in, in football i'm going to ask you in football but across the board in this new conference I would suggest respectfully that any fans who are just happy that BYU is in the Big 12 in the first year, they need to rethink their competitive <laughs> nature. This is not about a participation trophy. This is not about showing up with a smile and cashing a check. This is about, okay, now they've got to prove that they belong, and then they've got to go out and prove that they can contend. And those things, I expect them to be thinking inside that program. Nobody is thinking, hey, we're happy to be here. Everybody is thinking, okay, we're going to win every game, starting with the first one. And in order to contend to do that, there are things they need to do. But first of all is the mindset. And so BYU, you know, Blaine, you were saying the BYU's fans are among the best, you know, in, in the country, and they are. And I can't imagine there are very many of them that might be thinking, hey, we're just happy to be here. Oh, no, not at this place. <laughs> it's interesting. You change one word. We're happy to be here to we deserve to be here. And a few coaches have said that very phrase to me. Look, our, our goal now is to prove that we deserve to be in the Big 12 and we've deserved this for a long time. So, Trevor, with that in mind and focusing on football specifically, what type of record – would send that message. And maybe it's not as simple as a record. Maybe it's style of play, what BYU does when they get on the field. Like, what would show the Big 12 Conference that BYU deserves the invitation and now officially to be in the conference? I need to be competitive. I think, I think the, uh, from a record standpoint, when you look at their schedule, it's just brutal. It, it's brutal, especially because that Arkansas game is sitting there right before a really tough run of Big 12 conference games, and that'll be a physical game. And BYU will start their Big 12 run beat up because they're going to beat up Arkansas. It's going to be the same way on their end as well. That's going to be a physical game. And if BYU is able to make a bowl game, I think that fans should look at that as being a, a successful season given the schedule that they have. But what, what they need to do in order to get there are several things. I mean, you know, given – they need to stay healthy, et cetera. But the offense really needs to carry this thing. This offensive line should be one of the better offensive lines in the Big 12. The, the skill positions 
have a chance to be very, very good if they can come together from a chemistry standpoint. This offense should be able to score an awful lot of points. Really, it's up to the defense. And the defensive line needs to do a much better job of getting after the quarterback. Last year, they were awful at getting after the quarterback. And the secondary, in order to help them do that, will have to cover man coverage because I expect defensive coordinator Jay Hill to send the house after the quarterback, and that means two things. That means, first of all, the back-end guys have got to cover long enough for the front-end guys to do their work. And second, the guys that are rushing have got to get there quickly to bail out those guys that are on an island in the secondary. So as you watch this season unfold, the most important single question mark will be can they cover long enough for the pass rushers to get to the quarterback? If they can do that, then that six win as a good season could go higher, could go to seven or eight. I like that. Hey, I'm right here going like, amen, Trevor, amen, Trevor. <laughs> like, and I'll tell you what, you mentioned Arkansas. If I have to watch that quarterback drop back on a third and 11 and uh, BYU not get pressure and then him get containment around, get around containment on the end and run 17 yards for the first time, I'm going to punch myself in the face. <laughs> but that's just my own thing. That's my own issue. Don't do that. You're too pretty, <laughs> Bradley. You're too pretty. <laughs> so 14 teams in this conference this year, Trevor. Wh where would you be satisfied with them finishing in the conference standings in football? You know, in conference, where would I be satisfied undefeated? Right. Yeah. Uh, that would that I, I still think that way. But but as an, a football analyst, you have to look at what the rosters look like, what the depth looks like and what the, the teams that they're facing look like. I mean, coming off of that Arkansas game in Fayetteville, by the way, they play at Kansas last year. Kansas, up until Jalen Daniels, their quarterback got hurt, was the surprise team in the nation. Game day, college game day. VSPN went to a Kansas football game which is extraordinary <laughs> yeah, then the yeah. quarterback got hurt well and so they lost a few games well now Jalen Daniels is back 10 starters off of that offense are back and so after after what will be a physical game at Arkansas they've got to go to Kansas a resurgence team and that that's a tough one Cincinnati is going to have a really stout defense TCU has reloaded really well through the transfer portal coming off of their last year where they played in the the national championship game Texas Tech is the the trendy pick as a you know a potential dark horse uh, Big 12 champion if somebody sneaks up. Texas, they're at Texas. A lot of people expect them to win the Big 12, and there are people that expect them to beat Alabama in September. Texas is as strong as they've been in a decade. Now, this is the stretch of Big 12 games they've got to face after Arkansas. And so it's, it's you know, if, if they can finish somewhere in the middle – of the Big Ten in football, or Big 12, I'm sorry, in football, in their first year, I think you've got to look at the players and the coaches and say, you guys did a really good job in your first year as they then continue on to build the kind of depth in recruiting that they'll need to be able to compete at a higher level. ESPN college football analyst Trevor Maddich is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Maybe you just answered the question, Trevor, when you referenced Texas and that a lot of national analysts believe that the Longhorns are finally truly back and they might win a big 12 title for the first time in a very long time relative to their expectations are you all in on texas being the clear favorite to win the big 12 yes yes they have a, a offensive line that'll be one of the, the better offensive lines in the country especially pass protection their skill people are phenomenal they'll have one of the best receiving groups in the nation Quinn Ewers at quarterback got banged up against Alabama last year, and he struggled a bit. But now he's got a year under his belt in this system, and he is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the country. And if they can put all that together, it's going to be really hard to slow them down, much less to stop them. And their defense last year improved about nine points per game over the year before. They're on the rise, and they've got good experience coming back. I mean, it's hard to look at this Texas team and say, yep, that's their weakness that you can exploit. I mean, people that are saying that they can beat Alabama, I'm one of them. I think they're a serious threat to Alabama early in the season, and that means in the Big 12 they're an even bigger threat. You mentioned, Trevor, uh, a dark horse maybe in Texas Tech, but a lot of people have been talking about them. Um, so maybe you're not quite as much a dark horse as we think. It seems like every article I've read has said, hey, Texas Tech's going to compete this year. Don't be surprised by Texas Tech. Is there another team in the league that you say, okay, 
If Texas Tech is the clear dark horse, but not so dark because everybody's talking about him, who's that team that nobody's talking about in the league that could step up and compete for a title? Are people talking about um, TCU? They, I know they're I, talking I about Kansas State. I think everybody thinks TCU lost too much. You mentioned the transfer portal. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think they expect TCU to be back on top. So that, that would be a dark horse. Are you thinking TCU is going to be back again? I think TCU is going to have another really stout defense. And really on offense, it'll come down to the quarterback position. And, and last year's guy, Max Duggan, that took him to the national championship game, he came in. He wasn't the starter at the beginning of the season. He ended up coming in. The guy who started at the, at the beginning of that season is back, I believe. He's the guy now that had beat out Max Duggan to start with uh, last year. And so, you know, that quarterback position is going to be key to it to be able to pull everything together. But TCU is going to be a real threat. Kansas State, people don't talk about much, but they won the Big 12 last year. They beat TCU in the Big 12 championship game. Then TCU went on to the to the college football playoff. But I think that Kansas State is not a dark horse. Unfortunately for BYU, they're not facing Kansas State. That's the one favor that the schedule makers did for them. Trevor Maddich of ESPN is on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, before we let you go, we have to ask you about a bracket that we've been running for much of the month of June, and now it closes out in early July to determine the best win in BYU football history. It came down to the top two seeds, number one seed, number 1990 against Miami, against the game that you were the starting center in, the 1984 National Championship game. You and Blaine worked very closely <laughs> together in that game to beat Michigan and secure the National Championship. So Miami takes the win. How do you feel about Miami besting the 84 National Championship clincher? Well, first, let me say this about Blaine in that game. Michigan cheap shot at Robbie Bosco. Uh, one of their defensive linemen slammed into his leg long after he had thrown a ball. He had to leave the field. No one was sure if he was going to come back. The Michigan had momentum at that time. They were fired up. They could smell blood in the water. And in comes Blaine Fowler, at quarterback for BYU. And that's the moment where you would think Michigan would sell out to force mistakes from the backup quarterback. But you know what? Blaine is not a backup quarterback. He was a starting caliber quarterback. And I just looked it up again, Blaine. You threw seven passes during that stretch until Robbie came back. And you completed five of them, didn't you? Yeah, that's because I had good protection. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you had good protection. But but you, but you, the thing is, you completed them to our guys. You did a phenomenal job of keeping the ball rolling and stopping that Michigan momentum right in its tracks when Robbie you know, was helped off the field. And so that was a huge moment in that game. And, and I tell you, Blaine Fowler is one of the unsung heroes, or actually sung, I think. People, people realize what, what you did, Blaine. But one of the heroes, let me put it that way, of that national championship run because of, of what you did in that game. Yeah, Trevor, and here's the thing. I, I go into that game, I step into the huddle, and, and there's Trevor and, and Robert and I and Craig Garrick and Louie Wong and Dave Wright. That's our, our five guys up front, right? And Trevor says to me, hey, we got you. Like, don't worry about this. We got you. Just do your thing, right? And then Robert goes, we got, nobody's going to touch you, right? So, so first play, I drop by, and Robert gets beat by his dude. And then I, I have to spin around and roll out, and we make a play. And I go back to the huddle, and I look, and I go, Robert, I thought you had me. Like, and he goes, never will it ever happen again in this game. We got you now. And like Trevor and all those guys just shake their heads. But I have to tell you, you, you step into that huddle and with the leadership on that team, Tre Trevor Maddich, great player. Everybody knows how great a player Trevor was. But leadership doesn't get measured enough. And, and the leadership on that team with Trevor at center and the way he – ran the offense from the center position and made all the calls and brought confidence and got us into the right stuff. We don't talk about offensive line. Trevor Maddich is as much a part of that national championship run as Robbie Bosco or Glenn Kozlowski or Leon White or Kurt Govea. That offensive line did a, did a job that season and in that game, and they gave me all the confidence to just come in and play. It was pretty fun. Trevor, have we done a disservice after all of this, uh, you know, Look, looking back on the 84 game and, you know, the nostalgia, have we done a disservice as the fans ranking Miami's win number one over the 84 national championship clincher? Yeah, I think that was a collective brain freeze by the fans. 
Uh, that was a great individual win over Miami. Clearly, they have a ranked number one in the nation, and they came up to Provo, and the, the Cougars hit the Mighty Hurricanes in the mouth and beat them. And that was just incredible. I mean, you, you can take nothing away from that game. That was an individual game. It was great. It sparked the Heisman Trophy run of Ty Detmer. Nothing to take away from that. But the win over Michigan cemented the national championship. Let me say that again. The <laughs> national championship. And that Michigan team was outstanding. You know, people talk about their record coming into that, but they were a, a top, like, five or seven team. They were one of the best teams in the country early in the season. And then they lost a bunch of starters. And by the time the holiday bowl rolled around, they had almost all those guys back. I think the only one they were missing was Jim Harbaugh quarterback. Yeah. And so the team we faced was a really good team. So the perspective of it is what I believe makes the 1984 win the greatest win in BYU history. That's not to take anything away from those guys who beat Miami. That was incredible. And what a moment but it was it was it was the the the, the monumental history making yeah yeah of the 1984 game was you just I, I just can't imagine something better than that until they do it again and now that they're in the Big 12 they're in position now yeah. to do it again and when they deserve it they'll be there I'm just saying amen to everything Trevor did. I Trevor <laughs> I gave him I said hey you know what I'm gonna give you that Miami was the most talented team and best team BYU's ever played. But from sheer significance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and here's the thing. We, I don't know if we mentioned it, Trevor. It was only 56%, so it was a split vote, and Miami wins by a hair. Both great wins, but I'm with Trevor on every point that he just made. And, uh, and, and Trevor, we, we, we love you. We're grateful that you would come on the show with us. Um, always great to have my brother Trevor Maddox that took care of me when yes, I came into yes. games every time. I thought you, you gave us the phrase of the day, a, a collective brain phrase. Yes, exactly. Right. So <laughs> thanks, Trevor. Hey, but we love him anyway. That's why there's repentance. There you go. <laughs> thanks, Trevor. Right, right, Trevor. Hey, man. tomorrow, tune in on thanks, Independence man. Day to watch a decade of independence as Spencer and Jerem are joined by Tom Homo as they look back on the program's defining moments in independence and the impact it had on BYU athletics. Watch tomorrow at noon Eastern on BYU. TV and BYU Radio. Up next, a loaded Cougar whip around, including a brand new fan to the BYU fan base. I mean, he went out on social media, Blaine, to yes. state his commitment. You don't want to miss I love it. it. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. 
Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout the day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. That's everything. We got it covered. Make it happen. Let's make it happen. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer. He is Blaine Fowler. Let's get to today's headlines. Beginning with, if you missed it, Blaine. Yep, BYU, BYU is officially, is officially a member of the Big 12 Conference. Celebrated over the weekend with a countdown to midnight and the big party, which you co-hosted. Amazing. The official day was welcomed and celebrated all over the world. I mean, look at this, including, <laughs> including. Fireworks in the distance. Including Times Square. That's amazing. Including Times Square. That was an incredible scene at midnight <laughs> on July 1st. Former BYU golfer Peter Quest for perfection is, he's rolling right now, boy. Finished tied for fourth in the Rocket Mortgage Classic on the PGA Tour. 21 under par in four rounds. He earned himself uh, an over $300,000 paycheck as well for his efforts. He'll now compete in the John Deere Classic, earned an exemption for that. If he finishes top 76 there in the John Deere, which begins on Thursday, then he gets special exemption status on the PGA Tour for the remainder of the season. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Basically, and he seems to make the cut. When you're that young, you're just looking for your tour card, and, and he is in a great position. Love Peter. I've played with him. Great human being, too. So, um, How about Michael Rucker? Back up in the bigs, pitched in two games over the weekend for the Cubs. In two total innings against Cleveland, he allowed one hit, one earned run, and pitched three strikeouts. So keep it going, Michael Rucker. And he Atta hosted Dave McCann's Michael family Rucker. Yes, this he weekend, did. down on the field. So. Daniel Schneeman continues to crush, quite literally, in AAA baseball, competing for the Cleveland Guardians uh, farm system. He hit his third home run in his last five games for the Columbus Clippers. It's his eighth home run of the season. That is a career best in a season for Daniel Schneeman. And we're not even th through, why are we through half the season? Right. This, it's been an incredible, like, switch flip for Daniel Schneeman. And that's what you do to get picked up and taken into the bigs. That's, he's Amazing. on the track. Those are today's headlines. Now let's opinionate on a number of topics in the whip. Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Start us off, Blaine. Well, BYU football tweeted an image of the field at LaBelle Edwards Stadium with painted royal blue end zones and the Big 12 logo on the field. Also in royal blue. Yeah. My question, do you like the royal blue? 100% yes. I've wondered for a long time why BYU has not painted the end zones royal blue. It just, the color looks amazing. It's it's it can be seen on TV really well. I love this move by I'm, BYU. I'm Roy, I'm all royal all the time. I like it. BYU Athletics showed the following during the Big 12 celebration Friday night promo in Times Square that we've referenced a couple of times. Blaine, was this the best thing you saw in terms of celebratory moments as BYU went into the Big 12 over the weekend? I loved it because that's my home state, and I'm, I'm New York City is my favorite city in the world, but. Honestly, just the pure energy of the entire program from the yeah, fans, yeah. players, and coaches over the weekend that we got to be part of, you could f literally tangibly feel the excitement all weekend long. Um, it, that was the thing that was big for me. I just loved the energy in Provo all weekend. Oh, it's, it's so, incredible. Yeah, it was the best. Huge collaborative effort. BYU Athletics social media was busy this weekend. Friday they posted a This Is Cosmo Big 12 commercial, similar <laughs> to the This Is Sports Center ESPN commercials. Is Cosmo already the best mascot in the Big 12? Yes, he's the best mascot in the country. You put him in any conference, he's number one. Doesn't matter where he goes. He is the best mascot. And Blaine, I would argue...